A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hardy high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> grazing land of Texas made the fortunes of many early settlers. But as the cattle industry flourished, cattle rustling kept pace with it. The local sheriffs were unable to control the outlaws of the range country, and no man's property was safe until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight against crime and criminals. Return with us now to the thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Hilton Spread! Hail Silver! Hooray! It was late in the afternoon. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, his faithful Indian companion, had left the trail and were heading for a small woods. That looks like a good place to camp for the night, Tonto. Uh, plenty of cover. Uh, and out of the way. Come on, Silver. Hit him up, Scout. Here we are, Tonto. This way. We'll head there where the trees are thickest. Hit him up, Scout. There's a creek beyond and the place of the horses. Right in them horses. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, Scout. Oh. Now, point them horses the other way and keep on moving. What's the matter here? This just ain't a healthy spot for strangers, that's all, mister. Now, clear out. We're going to camp here. That's just too bad, ain't it? But I reckon you'll find room somewhere else. You got him. No, Tonto. And tell that ancient part of yours, mister, to watch what he's doing. One sudden move from him and he'll get drilled. That goes for the both of you. Now go ahead and clear out before I lose patience and start squeezing on the trigger of this here sex gun. Let's go, Tonto. Uh, Come on, Silver Scout. If I see you fellas there again, you won't get a warning next time. So just get a high pull of head. Why are you not riding woods? Why you not shoot him? We're going back, Kimasabi. Uh, but not until it's darker. And when we do, we won't be seen. And Tonto wonder what matter there. Did you notice those two freight wagons drawn up beneath the trees? Uh, Tonto see him. And that man who talked to us wasn't alone. Two other fellows jumped back out of sight when we reined up. Uh, I didn't get a good look at them, but I did see how they were dressed. Now I've got an idea that if we should meet again, I'd know them. One big fella, and the other one wore shotgun shafts. He probably came here from the northern range. That right. I've got an idea those wagons contain something we're not supposed to see. Ah. Uh, What's more, they're likely hidden in those woods for the day and won't be driven until it's dark. Maybe you're right. Whatever the reason for this, we'll investigate. There's a gulch branching off, Kimosabe. Uh, when we get into the gulch, we'll be out of sight. We'll stop there and wait until it's time to act. Come on, Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Some miles distant from the woods where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had sighted the mysterious wagons was Glenn Hilton's Rocking Eight Spread. It was the following noon that Glenn, accompanied by his foreman, Brad Roberts, reined in before his home. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brad, I'm going inside. 
You call all the boys to the bunkhouse and tell them my orders are to shoot them skunks on sight. I'll tell them. Why, Oman? Unsaddle my horse and turn him into the corral. Sure, boy. There'll be more trouble? A plenty. Brad will tell you about it. When you unsaddle the boss's horse, why, Oman, tell all the boys I want to see you. Paul, there's a man here. A rotten crook, the murdering, thieving, slaughtering, cold cats. If I ever Paul. lay in... Oh, excuse me, Bess. I'm so doggone riled, I reckon I was talking to myself. I said there's a man here. Mr. Corey. He come to see you. Oh, are you, Hilton? No, oh, it's you, is it? <laughs> you don't sound glad to see me. Sit down, sit down. Today I wouldn't be glad to see nobody. I'm so blasted mad I could show up wildcats. I ain't never been so mad afore, and if I got any matter, I'd bust. Just once I'd like to get my hands on them sneaking varmints. So help me, just once. And by thunder, I take their hides off them. There's been more? One hundred head of prime cattle gone. One hundred, count them. At the rate they're going, a month from now, I'll be able to graze what cows are left on an acre of ground. And there wouldn't have to be no grass left on them either. I don't see why rustlers would risk the neck for cattle with beef, the price tis. They ain't rustlers. They're murdering skinners. Skinners? Why? Corey, you know what the varmints are doing? You said they stole a hundred heads? Never said no such thing. They ain't after beef, they're after hides. Sometime between yesterday and this morning, they shot down 100 head of cattle, skinned them on the spot and made over the hides, leaving the carcasses for the buzzards. You don't see. How in blazes is a fellow to get after crooks like them? You can trail them like maybe you could if they made off with the cattle. Likely they got pack horses with them to carry the hides. And with nothing but horses to worry about, it ain't no chore at all for them to cover their sign. This has happened before? I have a dozen times. Pa, the boys will find them one of these days. You wait and see. That's what I'm hoping. But even so... Yes? I, I reckon, honey, you savvy things would be pretty tough just now, even without these crooks operating. I know, Pa. And if it's cool you're thinking of... Best we'll... girl, I can't even promise that I can send you east next year. I don't know. First the market for beef going to smash, then my cows being slaughtered and skinned and... There now, Pa. It's all right. Why... Well, I... I never wanted to go east to school anyhow. That is, not extra special. Sure, not. In fact, did. Hilton, the best thing you could do would be to accept the offer I made the last time I was here. You trying to buy me out again? What else can you do but sell? Well, next season the market will be better. You can't be certain. I'm willing to gamble on it. And if you were certain, what would it good, good it do you if you had no cows left to sell? If I could just lay my hands on them crooks. <laughs> you don't seem to be having much luck. You admitted this ain't the first time they struck. Yeah. Why don't you be sensible? Get out from under while you can. Well, you ain't made me a decent offer yet. Five thousand dollars. For a spread that's worth fifty thousand? Who'd give you that? Oh, when times pick up. And I, I still find... say when times pick up, you're likely to have lost all your cattle. No, Hilton, you ain't got much choice. I happen to know you old back wages you men right now. How are you gonna pay him through the winter? What are you gonna live on? Yes, for a loan, what bank would give it to you under the circumstances? You're stopped at every turn. How come you're so darn anxious to get my spread? Ain't that ranch of yours over to Longhorn City enough for you? You can always use more land. At a price, it's the same as stealing. Business is business, Hilton. I'll admit this place is a bargain at 5000 On the other hand, you must get money. And I'm the only man in this part of the state with cash to spare, so... Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to hang on. Good for you, Pa. That's your last word? It is. Well, then, let me get on. Change your mind, I'm staying in town. Longhorn City? Not at present. Too far from here. I've got an idea you'll be wanting to get in touch with me. I'll be in Dawson. Good day, Hilton. Afternoon, miss. Good day. Remember, I'll be in Dawson. Blast him. He can stay in town till the whole state of Texas freezes over before I deal with him. But you will deal with him. Man. A crook. Where'd you come from? How'd you get in here? I'll... I came in the back way. Keep your hand from that gun, Hilton. I'm not here to harm you. You, you better what, get out, mister. You couldn't have got in here without some of the boys seeing you in that mess. They're all in the bunkhouse. But I... I looked inside, and I saw something that'll interest the both of you. What are you talking about? Your cattle have been killed for the hide. You're one of the crooks that done it. You must be. That's it, sure. I'm shooting. not one of them, but at least two of your men are. Who? I don't know their names, but I can describe them. It's some trick. Go on, describe them. One is a heavy set fellow with a red face and rough black whiskers. His eyes are close together and he squints. Why, why, that's Hank. The other man is younger. He's the only man I noticed in your bunkhouse wearing shotgun chaps. The type of chaps worn by cowboys from the north. Wyoming. Hank in Wyoming, huh? 
I'll remember those names. You think I'm a swallower in this? I believe you will. You must think I'm loco. Don't let my mask mislead you. Think back, Hilton. You've got a cousin, Dade Follett. He got in trouble with the law about a year ago. Someone helped him out. It's likely he told you about it. But but you couldn't be... Couldn't be what? Well, the Lone Ranger. Hey, I wonder. Stranger, what color is your horse? White. What's his name? His name is Silver. Silver? If you're the Lone Ranger, you won't have no objections to my looking at one of your guns. Here you are. Now, let me see. Miss, look at here. This here gun's loaded with silver bullets. I see. You believe me now? I ain't saying yes or no. But if you've got something to tell me, I'll listen. Now, what's this about Hank and why woman? What reason you got for saying what you did? Yesterday, Tonto and I saw two wagons in the woods south of here. A man warned us away. Two other men tried to keep out of sight. They were the two you just named. But what about them wagons? We went to the woods that night. Hank and Wyoming were gone, but the wagons were guarded by several other men besides the one we'd spoken to. Yeah? We couldn't get close without giving ourselves away. But we saw enough to indicate those wagons were loaded with hides. Leap on hop toads. Best get me my spare gun. I'm going out there at the bunkhouse and route out Hank No, and... but I... You've only my word for their guilt. Besides, those men are working for someone else. And I suspect who that person is. You do? I won't name him now. Not until Tonto and I have made sure. Then we'll see you get all the evidence against him you need. How long will that take? I can't say. But in the meantime, you're to do two things. Yeah? What's the value of the beef you've had killed? It won't come to a penny under $2,000. Then get in touch with the fellow who was just here. Offer him an option on your place for 2000 If at the end of a month you decide not to sell or he decides not to buy, you'll give him the money back. If you do sell, he can get title for 3000 more. I don't savvy this. You will. Now, how many of your men can you trust? Trust? We know Hank and Wyoming are stealing from you. They may have Confederates. We'll need the help of some of your men. And they must be men who can be depended on. Well, Brad will know which ones to choose. Brad? My foreman. You're sure of him? Well, he's been with me for ten years. Good. Send for him now. Tell him he's to pick out a half a dozen fellows. He's certain they're loyal. I'll do that. Bess, you heard the masked man. Go outside and call Brad in. All right, Paul. Don't mention that I'm here and see that he comes alone. All right. A stranger? Yes? Any objections to my making a guess? A guess? About the fellow you say is behind all his crookedness. Go ahead. I'm betting it's that fellow, Corey. Right? That's the man I suspect, Hilton. But I can tell you this. We may learn that he's guilty. Getting evidence to prove it, however, will be another thing. Summoned to the ranch house, listened to the Lone Ranger and Hilton, then returned to the crew in his charge. Strangely enough, he repeated what had been said to the entire group. Even Hank and Wyoming were present. When Brad finished, they roared with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's rich, oh, Brad. Imagine the boss and that mask fella asking you to help trap the fellas taking them hide. <laughs> That's... That's the best I ever heard. <laughs> it was all I could do to keep them busted out laughing in their faces. And the masked hombre stood right there and told his scheme, huh? Eh? Sure, why not? <laughs> Boss guaranteed I was all right, didn't he? Uh, what was his scheme? Was it a good one? Well, the funny part of it is, fellas, if I really was on their side like the boss figures... It might turn the trick. Yeah? yeah it ain't much to it, but it'd work all right. He ain't said yet what it was. Shucks. They're going to fix it so it looks real easy to kill one special herd of cows and get the hides. But while that's being done, the mask fella and the boss, with the sheriff and me and the fellas I'm to pick out, will be waiting and watching. I get it. Then they jumps out and arrest us, huh? Sure. That uh, sort of puts you in a fix, though, don't it, Brad? Why? Why, you're supposed to help. <laughs> sure, I'll help. I'm going to have half a dozen of you fellas along with me, too. I don't savvy. Me neither. I don't see how I'll you... just listen a second. Corey ain't going to get mad if something should happen to Hilton, is he? That'd just make it easier to get the place from the girl, seeing that she'd own it then. Uh-huh, that's so. As for the sheriff and the mask fella, they're both mixed up in our business. And they'd be a lot safer if they was out of the way. But how are you going to do all that? <laughs> Easy as falling off a log. Me and the fellas I pick out will be seven of their three. The rest of you go after the herd. Then when them three tries to make trouble, we'll take over and finish them off. Sounds good. That ain't going to be no sense to explain them three killings, though. Why won't it? We'll just say we was jumped by the fellows as after the hides, and the boss and the other two got killed in the fight. Sure. <laughs> Turning their own scheme again, huh? Right. 
And boys, this is a job Corey will pay high for. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue our story, the Lone Ranger, trusting Glenn Hilton's judgment, did not suspect that Brad, the man they had chosen to help them, was plotting their death. After Brad's departure, the masked man remained to question Hilton further, then left the house and rejoined Tonto. Together, they raced to the woods where they'd seen the wagons the day before, and from that point, they followed the trail the wagons had left. The tracks are still heading toward Longhorn City, as I expected, Tonto. Uh, it's easy. Follow them. As long as the hides aren't seen, they have no particular reason for hiding the trail. The hides, no doubt, were brought to the wagons by pack horse, sent to Longhorn City by wagon and shipped out at once by train. Uh, and still another reason to suspect Corey. His ranch is near the town. He's a big man in that section. He's probably clever enough not to ship the hides under his own name. No matter how it's done, he'd see to it no questions were asked. And that's right. And he's anxious to buy Hilton out. It'd be a clever trick to get a profit from the hides and at the same time force Hilton to sell. Him heap smart. But if he's guilty, Kimosabe, we've got one advantage over him. And mm, what's that? A guilty man is outside the law. No matter how he covers up, the fact remains he faces punishment once the truth is known. That's right. And we'll learn the truth. And what we do then? I've already got a plan to catch the fellows who are actually stealing the hides. I explained it to Hilton and his foreman. Oh. The more I think of it, Tonto, the more I'm convinced there's a way to trap Corey as well. That'd be good. But that's in the future. Our job now is to follow this trail. Come on, Silver. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail to Longhorn City, Hilton took the masked man's advice and rode to Dawson to find Corey. Entering the Rawhide Cafe, he sighted Corey at the crowded bar. How you been? Yeah, howdy, howdy, fellas. Howdy, Evans. Oh, Mr. Corey. Oh, hello there, Hilton. Can I speak to you alone? <laughs> Changed your mind already, huh? Not exactly. Come on, let's sit down over to that table there. Glad to. Are you drinking? Uh, maybe later. Not now. Come on. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, sit down, and I'll tell you. Well, uh, I still ain't going to buy the rock and age, I suppose. <laughs> at my price. Uh, well, I figured that. If you have decided to sell, we can make the deal at once. Bank here, I'll honor my check. Lawyer Stebbins can make out the papers. Nope, I still ain't made up my mind to it. I got a different proposition. Yeah? An option, sort of. Oh. At least, wise, I guess that's the name for it. I don't know that I'm interested. What are the terms of it? Uh, you pay me $2,000. What? Just hold on, he asked me to tell you. Yeah, all right, all right. You pay me 2000 in cash, and I give you my promise I won't sell to nobody else inside of a month. That's to give me time to make up my mind for sure. When the month's up, if I don't want to sell, you get your cash back. And if you will? Then you just hand me another 3000 and the whole thing's yours. Very interesting, but what do I get out of it? Huh? A man who buys an option usually gets the right to buy within a certain period. According to this proposition, all I get is a promise from you that the rocking age won't be sold to anybody else. There it is. You can take it or leave it. And then I'm leaving it. Of course, you savvy, I ain't never cotton to you very much, Corey. What if you haven't? Well, you see, if you won't give me cash for the option, like I said, I might get just mad enough to sell out to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> You acquainted with anyone around here with 5000 to spare? I thought we went over all that before. Uh-huh. But maybe I forgot to mention that to the right party, I might sell out for just a 1000 or two. I reckon there's folks in the neighborhood that can lay their hands on that much cash without no trouble. You do a fool thing like that? Sure I would. And he'd rather sell out for next to nothing to a friend and give a fellow I don't like a chance to make a profit off of me. You old fool. Well, I reckon that settles it then. Sorry, now I... sit got... down. Huh? You changed your mind? I said sit down. Just as you say. I want to know a little more about this. If I give you 2000 how do I know you wouldn't pocket it and tell me to go to Blaze at the end of the month? Now, that wouldn't hardly pay me, would it? But it can be put in the paper that if I won't sell, i got to return the cash in front of witnesses. Lawyer Stebbins can write that in, I guess. Hmm. 
Well? Mm, I'll do it. Fine and dandy. Now you get the cash. I'll drive around with it in a day or so. Uh, nope. You just got through saying the bank can pay out more than twice that willing. You can give me the 2000 now. Stebbins just went to his office and the bank ain't closed yet. Seems to me there's something funny about this. Look here, Corey. You ever hear of me telling something that wasn't true? No, I'll give you credit for that. Then I give you my solemn word. If there is something funny in this deal, I don't know about it. Mm, very well, then. Let's go. We'll see Stebbins first. The option was drawn up and the $2,000 turned over to Glenn Hilton. But three weeks after the date of this transaction, the rancher had received no further word from the mask man. Another raid had occurred in the interval. More cattle were slaughtered and more hides stolen. After the evening meal one night, Glenn confessed his misgivings to his daughter. Gosh, Bess, I don't know what to make of it. I thought for sure we'd hear from that mask fellow by this time. Well, maybe he was. Hilton. Pa, it's him. Gosh, mister, where you been? I couldn't get here sooner. Tonto and I had a lot of work to do. We've been busy every minute. Yeah, doing what? There's no time to explain. Where's your foreman? We've got to get started. Huh? No. You've had that herd I spoke of sent to Lost Valley? Me and Brad heard them there ourselves. The men stealing those hides will think that a perfect place for the work. Get Brad and see that Hank and Wyoming hear about the herd being up there. Now do that. But where's Tonto? I left him in Dawson. We stopped in there to get the sheriff. He'll cut across country and meet us on the way. But why couldn't Tonto come with you? Because, Hilton, at a certain time, he's taking a message to Corey. Now, hurry, there's no time for talk. You bet. Brad, come here. I want to see you. Mister, uh, you're sure you'll catch those crooks? There's another train scheduled to leave Longhorn City in three days. If they don't act tonight, they never will. Glenn Hilton, unaware that Hank and Wyoming were already in full possession of the Lone Ranger's plans, carefully permitted them to overhear a statement concerning the herd in Lost Valley. Then, with Brad and a half a dozen cowboys, he joined the Lone Ranger. The group slipped cautiously from the ranch, hoping they had not been observed. Then they set out at full gallop to reach Lost Valley first. Come on, Silver! Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Arriving at Lost Valley, they headed for a group of rocks that in the night would afford them perfect cover. Below them, bedded down, was a large herd of splendid cattle. And the masked man decided they'd approach close enough. He gave the signal to halt. Pull up! Pull, Silver! Pull up! Pull up! Get down behind these rocks. How long do you think we'll have to wait? It won't be long. They won't waste time getting here if they take our bait. When they do, we'll be in a position to see and hear everything that's said and done. <laughs> You're slick, mister. Mighty slick. The period of waiting became longer than the masked man had expected. But finally, he and his companions heard the sound of approaching hoofs. There they are. The rotten crooks. Brad, just as soon as they start something, we'll rush them. Don't you worry, boss. We'll handle things. That's all been arranged beforehand. Quiet. They're getting ready to kill them cows. What are we waiting for? Come on, that's proof enough. Wait. Where's the sheriff? Here I am. Sheriff. Look over there in the direction of Dawson. Do you see anything? I... Golly, yes. Two more horsemen. Watch them carefully. They'll join these men below us. One of them is Tato, and the other is Corey. Corey? That's Tato. Hey, what is this? What's Corey doing here? Quiet. You'll see in a moment. They joined them cooks, all right. By thunder, that is Corey. And he looks hopping mad. Listen, try to hear what they say. But, Mr. Corey, we never knew... You're right, right now, Cortez. First, you double cross Hilton. Then you turn around and double cross me again. Wait, now. We never stopped to look at the brands, Mr. Corey. How would we know they was your cows? Yeah. What's that? Ain't them my cows? I didn't have time to tell you before, Hilton. That's what took Tonto and me so long. We drove that herd all the way here from Corey's ranch. Your cattle was sent to another part of the range. But why? For exactly the result we got. Tonto went to Corey and told him Hank and the others were stealing his cows and then selling the hides back to him. That brought him here and gave the sheriff a chance to see for himself that Corey was behind all this. You bet I seen. Come on. Let's arrest them fellas. No, you don't. Keep these three operas covered, boys. Right, Brad. What in thunder? You, Brad, you're in with them, too. Uh-huh. Fact is, Hilton, every doggone man you've hired is working for Corey. Why, you... Then you're going to jail, too. Sheriff, dead men don't jail nobody. You, you're aiming to drill us? The three of you, you, the boss, the mask man. Now, what the... to the saddle. Fire! Oh, my hand. Now, Hilton, come on. Let's go, Silver. Get up there. Sono, into the herd. Stampede them. Get moving. That's the only way we can round up these crooks. 
Empty the cannon by Corey's gang ahead of them. Come on, Silver! Sending Silver at the herd with the sheriff and Hilton following, the masked man aroused the frightened animals, dropped them blundering to their feet, heading them about and drove them in the terror-stricken mass of Corey and his confederates. The outlaws, unprepared for the masked man's lightning maneuver, had no more than time enough to leap into their saddles and race before the maddening herd. The narrowing walls of Lost Valley hemmed the outlaws in. No side canyons appeared to afford them a means of escape. And every time they eased up their rapidly tiring mounts, the stampeding herd made them spur forward again. That's enough, men! Let the herd slow up! We've got Corey just where we want him! It was still some time before the cattle lost their terror and began to slow down. But at last, driven no longer, their pace gradually fell to a walk. Some stopped entirely and began to browse on the buffalo grass. Then the masked man, Tonto, Hilton, and the sheriff cut through the herd and overtook their quarry. Throw down your arms! You're all under arrest! Throw, Silver! Oh, 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 we give up! You need to point that gun down! There ain't no place for us to run to even if we wanted to. The valley comes to a dead end just up ahead. Can you handle these fellows now, Sheriff? I uh, think I can. Tie them to their saddles and they'll ride along to jail just as peaceful as you please. Uh, you can't jail me. You'll go along with the rest of them, Corey. It was the, the masked man that done this. Blame right he did. Mister, I'm downright grateful. Come on, Tonto. Don't don't them fellas ever wait to be thanked? Not the Lone Ranger and Tonto, Glenn. They just... The blaze is with them. Hilton, you got my $2,000 and I want it back. Yeah? Well, that reminds me. Uh, huh? Reminds me of something the masked fella said. He sort of hinted, Corey, that you'd be wanting that cash. But he said Glenn didn't have to give it back unless you asked for it. But it just did. Only we can't hear a word you're saying. And when I get you to jail, you'll be put in a place where nobody will hear you. And that 2000 will just about pay Glenn for the harm you done him. Come on, Silver Almoy! Nora Stevens is looking for her brother! We'll help her find him! you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>